When it comes to personal development, where does magic happen? I saw a picture once. There was a big circle labeled comfort zone. And off to the side, there was a little circle labeled where magic happens. OK, I get that. Magic happens outside of the comfort zone. Where else does magic happen? What has the power to raise a barn, literally or figuratively, feed our souls, help us find vitality, affect real big change, and raise a lot of money for amazing causes? Community. Community is where magic happens. Magic for the world and magic for engaged community members. What is community? In my mind, it is a group of people who have something in common that unites them. There's the geographic community, whom they see when they're out shopping or getting coffee, the great neighborhood or even the city. There are the people who share a background or practice in common. For example, the Spanish-speaking community, the Unitarian community, the swimming community. Getting involved with our communities is one of the best things we can do for both ourselves and our world. The potential power of community is huge. Volunteer with community and raise a barn, literally or figuratively. Break bread with community and we feed our souls. Recreate with community and we find vitality. Vote with community and we can be part of a real big change. Pool community resources and the fundraising possibilities come alive. Sports boosters can fund an athletic program. A capital campaign can remodel an art center, like here in Grass Valley. And GoFundMe pages contribute to life-saving medical treatments for community members. It's all pretty magical, but if we're lucky enough to be caring, aware, and involve community members, we might find that the magic for us is how community can forge us as leaders. My favorite leaders have focused on improving the lives around them, the lives of people with whom they are united by a common background. This focus on community is what launched them into leadership. Because I'm a proud Californian, the two examples I'm going to give today are California elected officials. In 1990, a smart young Latino man from an economically poor San Fernando Valley family began the mechanical engineering program at MIT. Now, MIT is groundbreaking in many ways, and not just because it educates the top tech students from around the world. In the early 1980s, MIT began a Hispanic student recruitment program involving students, alumni, and admissions officers. So alongside of his tough engineering education, this man got involved in this recruitment of fellow members of his ethnic community. He spoke at high schools and worked telethons, remember telethons, to spread the word that this world-class education was, as they may not have heard, available to them. Back in SoCal after graduation, this man worked as an engineer at Hughes Aircraft, but continued and escalated his involvement in the San Fernando Valley. He cut his teeth on his first political campaign and realized that it was politics, not rocket science, that gave him the ability to help his community the most. As a rising leader in Los Angeles, he took on such issues as curbing gang violence, maintaining the integrity of the local college board, and reopening a closed power plant so that his neighborhood could have more jobs and more power. Fast forward through a magically steep rise through the ranks and this man is now California Secretary of State, Alex Padilla. He advises aspiring leaders, pick something that you truly care about and get involved because you can make an impact in your community, large or small. My other example is a woman who credits her community service to growing up with the Girl Scouts. But her trajectory as a leader began in earnest while she was an accountant at a big six accounting firm, and she realized that there were no women in the accounting leadership. So she started her own firm, and she joined the Asian Business Association and Small Business Association and started lobbying for issues 
that affected her communities of female and minority professionals. Her work helped lead to socially responsible contracting for women and minorities in San Francisco. And she realized the power of government to create positive change. While she was still a professional accountant, she found she spent the most of her time using her skills to help others in a part-time side role as a state senator's staffer. She would help constituents figure out complicated employment and payroll issues for the, the state senator. Finally, in 2002, she gave into the call of public service as a leader in the San Francisco community, working toward concrete laws of inclusion in business. She climbed the magical ladder, and in January this year, she was sworn in as California State Treasurer Fiona Ma. She advises aspiring leaders to listen to their hearts. Look, I don't want to knock ambition. Ambition drives people to be better, to be doers rather than to be just dreamers. But hunger for power and status and personal success, naked ambition, if you will, is definitely a driving force of many leaders. And as anyone who has binge watched House of Cards knows, it can be dangerous. Nakedly ambitious people, and I'm not going to name names, can cultivate themselves to seem caring, but when judging a leader at election time, take a look at their backgrounds. Was their first foray into community leadership the reframing of a personal, professional, and political background specifically to give an appearance of empathy with the masses and win an election or appointment? Or was it rooted in true, caring community involvement? There's an important difference in attitude, a difference that I think should transcend partisan politics. One says, look, I'm one of you, so I know your priorities, and I'm most likely to vote the same way you would on issues. Elect me. The other says, look, I'm one of you, I know your priorities, and through my dedication to you, I've exhausted what I can do for this community as a private citizen, so help me do more. I know who would get my vote. A 2013 article by the Atlantic Monthly proclaims that relationships are more important than ambition. It profiled people who prioritize social connections and people who are fueled by personal ambition and found that social connections including ties to friends and neighbors and civic engagement, were independently and robustly related to happiness and life satisfaction. Perhaps becoming a leader through community involvement rather than personal ambition to achieve power is more rewarding not only to the community, but to the individual as well. Google Dictionary defines magic as the power of apparently influencing the course of events by mysterious or supernatural forces. The power contained in a community, whether latent or activated, is enormous, supernatural and related to any one individual. For those individuals who care so much that they'll dedicate themselves, their lives, to helping positively influence their community's course, may the magic happen for them and may it lift these treasured souls into inspired leadership. Thank you.